information. You know, you got to have information in this business. You got to have a lot of it. Welcome to Buick Know How. This is the second of a series of programs on drivability. And these programs are loaded with information, lots of information. These programs focus on fuel injected engines used in Buicks from 1986 through the 1992 model year. In this program, which is divided into two parts, we're going to review a few of the recent updates to the T100 and several features of the T100 and Tech 1 that can help you drivability technicians make better use of your time. It should be remembered, however, that by itself, no equipment on the market today fixes vehicles or is even able to determine the exact cause of an intermittent problem without a technician. It requires patience and thought to make an intermittent display itself. Well, there's quite a few different approaches that we have to take to a problem that we can't solve on a, on a car that does have a drivability problem. Um, we have uh, the Tech 1 that helps us in diagnosis. We also have the CAMS machine. Well, we're going to work on making that better. Oh, by the way, this uh, know-how program is not meant as a substitute for the several training center classes on T100 and Tech 1 operation. Contact your training center for information and class dates. The next know-how program in this series will concentrate on the 2.3 liter, the 3.0 liter, the 3.8 liter, the 3300 and the 3800 engines. The last program in this series will concentrate on the 2.5 liter engine, the 2.8 3.1 liter engine family and the 5.0 5.7 liter engine family. These programs will provide Buick drivability technicians with a quick reference source and are full of valuable information. The know-how manuals will also provide detailed information on ECM internal workings and system operation that can be the center point of later training sessions offered by your district service manager. The reference manuals for these drivability programs and know-how 139 drivability diagnosis fuels should be kept together in a notebook to form a drivability handbook. This drivability handbook concentrates all the latest service information in one place for easy reference. Oh, and speaking of quick reference, this program includes a laminated Buick drivability quick reference chart. This chart contains information that is used every day and has always been available, but in the past took some looking for. Included on the chart are specifications such as spark plug gap, fuel pressure and fuel injector resistance. Also listed are part numbers of filters and other routinely used tune-up components. The backside contains procedures for testing ignition coils, plug wires and exhaust back pressure as well as the steps for adjusting minimum air rate on various engine families. Now all this information is on one convenient card that fits easily into a toolbox. But now, let's get right into drivability. Well, the new uh, computer cars are, they have less problems than the older cars because of no carburetor. It's all fuel injected. And it's a lot easier to diagnose than the older cars, too. You have less cold drivability problems, less sag and hesitation on the fuel injected cars which makes it easier to diagnose that's right but easier doesn't necessarily mean easy let's start with the computer two different types of computers have been used on Buick vehicles since 1986 these are known as the non P4 and GMP4 on most versions of GMP4 computers it is possible to control various outputs with the T100 or Tech 1. This is known as bi-directional access. Bi-directional access means that commands can be fed through the ALDL into the GMP4 computer. One example of bi-directional access is that trouble codes can be cleared without disconnecting the vehicle's battery. Block learn memory can also be reset if memory values have been stored based on a problem condition, 
say a vacuum leak or leaky injectors. Resetting block learn memory instantly erases the improper fuel mixture adjustments learned during previous operations. Various ECM outputs can also be controlled or turned on and off. This can be helpful when troubleshooting a quad driver fault. By using the bi-directional capabilities of the P4 ECM, it's possible to identify which circuit is causing the code to set. Using bi-directional access to turn on or off the torque converter clutch, for example, can also be helpful in diagnosing drivability complaints. And while talking about transmission components, technicians who do transmission troubleshooting should be aware of the ability of the Tech 1 to not only command the torque converter clutch, but to actually take over and manually shift the transaxle on vehicles with the 4T60 E transaxle. Being aware of the P4's bi-directional ability can make diagnosing some drivability complaints quicker. In fact, scan tools have become a standard aid to the extent that the 3800 VIN L engine, for example, no longer flashes loop status with the service engine soon light when ALDL pins A and B are grounded together with the engine running. The speed at which the computer can send information to the ALDL is another of the major differences between non-P4 and GNP4 computers. This speed is called baud rate. Okay, the non-P4 computer, which is also known as the GMCM, sends information at a rate of 160 baud, meaning a complete list of all data parameters is sent every one and a quarter seconds. On the other hand, the GMP4 computer sends information at a rate of 8192 baud, meaning that data list is sent about every tenth of a second, or 11 frames of data each second. Baud rate does not reflect the internal processing speed of either computer. Even the non-P4 slow computer processes information internally at a speed measured in megahertz. Baud rate only becomes important when using a scan tool and especially when using a scan tool to diagnose an intermittent problem. With the 8192 baud rate found on the GMP4 computer, the ability to see scan data is only limited by the speed at which the scan tool can read the data. So, how does this affect drivability technicians? Intermittent problems are probably the most difficult of any problem to find uh, and repair. Most of the time, it's we keep the car and we have to just continually drive it. If it's something that happens while the car is driving, it, it takes a while. There are a few reasons intermittents may be difficult to diagnose. Let's look at an example of an intermittent problem that could occur with the throttle position sensor. We'll create a condition that affects engine operation, but does not show up on the data stream. With the engine warm and idling, the throttle position sensor reading should be between 0.33 and 0.46 volt on a 3800 VIN L engine. When we briefly ground the throttle position sensor, the engine misses. But chances are the scan tool does not register any change in throttle position voltage. The data showing this quick one-time miss was not transferred to the scan tool because the baud rate is slow. The faster the baud rate, the more likely it is that information showing an intermittent problem can be captured by the scan tool. However, ECM baud rate is not the only limiting factor. Scan tools also have different maximum rates of receiving ALDL data. The T100, for example, displays a maximum of two and a half data frames per second in dynamic display. This is true even when connected to a GMP4 ECM. The Tech 1 in snapshot mode can capture 5 frames per second, and the T100 vehicle service monitor can capture 7 frames per second. As you can see, using various scan tools can improve or reduce your ability to catch intermittent problems in the data stream. 
The Tech One is a diagnostic computer, which is a versatile, powerful aid in the diagnosis and repair of Buick electronic systems. This tool, along with an understanding of the customer's complaint and the conditions under which the complaint occurs, will help you get the car fixed properly and in less time. The Tech One uses plug-in cartridges that contain diagnostic programs for many different vehicle systems. And because of its size and ease of use, the Tech One is an effective tool for diagnosing intermittent problems. We, until the Tech One was available, all the other scan tools that were on the market that we've gone through several of, um, they don't compare at all to the Tech One. The Tech One's far and away um, much more useful and durable too because the other ones, right, they were in the repair shop more than they were in the, our shop. That's right. And now, most technicians are familiar with how to use the Tech One as a scan tool. But some are not aware of the benefits of snapshot mode in detecting intermittent problems. By setting up the Tech One in snapshot mode, data parameters can be viewed live as in data list mode. In addition, several data streams can be captured for review at one time. This is particularly useful during test drives. To diagnose intermittent problems, F3 is pressed to enter the snapshot test mode. In the snapshot mode, the Tech 1 can be triggered to record data when a fault occurs. After choosing snapshot mode, ECM operation may also need to be selected for some 1986 models for road test or open mode operation. On other vehicles, only trigger condition is selected. Trigger conditions may be selected from any code, single code, or manual trigger. Intermittent problems seldom set trouble codes, so in most cases, manual trigger is most appropriate. The manual trigger saves data when the trigger is activated. Beginning with the 87 through 90 ECM Plus cartridge, the trigger point can be adjusted from the snapshot options screen by pressing F9. Keep in mind that just like the vehicle service monitor for the T100, the Tech 1 in the snapshot mode continually takes data into memory. In past cartridges, and as a default in the 87 through 90 ECM and later cartridges, a mid-trigger point is used. As long as the Tech 1 is hooked up, data is being received. When the trigger key is pressed, the latest data is captured, filling one half of the Tech 1's available memory. The Tech 1 then continues to capture data until the last half of the memory is full. Often, the mid or center trigger point is the most helpful. However, in certain cases, such as trying to diagnose a cold start stall, it may be better to select the beginning point. When the beginning point is selected and the trigger button is pressed just before starting the vehicle, the maximum amount of data can be stored in the sample. Once the trigger point has been selected, a flashing W in the lower right-hand corner of the display means the Tech 1 is waiting for the trigger to be tripped. The Tech 1 is triggered when the F9 exit or enter keys are pressed. The flashing W is replaced with a fixed T. After the trigger has been pressed, the Tech 1 continues to save data samples until either its memory is full or the exit button is pressed, stopping data captured. When the memory is full or the exit button is pressed, the Tech 1 goes into data display. When in data display, the data to be displayed is selected by using the yes and no keys. Some data can be quickly displayed by pressing selective F keys. During data display, F2 is pressed to view trouble codes. On 87 through 90 ECM and later cartridges, the F4 key is used to display the first or most negative stored sample. The F6 key is used to display the latest sample. 
and the F5 key is used to display the trigger sample. The up and down keys are used to select the desired sample. Sample minus one refers to the sample immediately preceding the trigger. Sample zero is the sample at the time of the trigger. Sample plus one is the sample immediately after the trigger. If enter is pressed while in data display, the TEC1 toggles between frame index and frame time. Frame time displays the time in seconds before or after the trigger point that the displayed data was captured. Exit is pressed to return to the trigger select menu. Pressing exit again returns to the test mode menu. Another function of the Tech one that drivability technicians should be familiar with is the ability to create data pairs. When data pairs are created, either the upper or lower half of the display is fixed, allowing other data to be scrolled across the other half of the display. Data pairs can be used to display live data in the data display mode, or data pairs can be used to display data in snapshot mode both while viewing live data before a trigger and while reviewing a snapshot. A data parameter is fixed in the upper half of the screen by pressing the F0 key. Pressing the yes and no keys scrolls through the data on the bottom half of the screen. Pressing the F1 key frees the display. A data parameter is fixed in the lower half of the screen by pressing the F1 key. Pressing the F0 key frees the display. Abnormalities in such inputs as the vehicle speed sensor or the throttle position sensor may cause a problem. For example, to diagnose torque converter clutch chuggle, it is helpful to know when the TCC clutch is instructed to engage. With the status of the torque converter clutch displayed, it is possible to look at the inputs that control the TCC. The Tech one also has a Keep Alive memory circuit. The Keep Alive memory circuit enables the Tech one to retain stored data for a minimum of 20 minutes after being disconnected from a power source. This enables the user to reconnect the Tech one to any available 12 volt power source and review the captured data. Uh, the Tech one I find to be quick and easy to use, speed efficient, um, but it's limited in that you can only see so many variables at once, so many parameters. Whereas the T100, you can see the whole menu of parameters at the same time. That's right, and that's why the second part of this program focuses on the T100.